Hello, this is Watercolor Painting with Richard Becker. What I'm going to show you is the method I use for painting pictures like this. It's going to be a four-step method of developing your picture from light to medium to dark to extra dark, working from large to small to medium size shapes and finishing it off with the smallest, darkest, most specific marks. What I'm using is this process of drawing the picture out lightly with a lead pencil, going in with very light colors, a lot of water, letting the colors run together. <clears throat> Every picture you do, you want a combination of soft and crisp marks. And the way the watercolor works is it wants to start out soft by using a big brush, blocking in a lot of these shapes here, letting colors run together creating overall softness throughout the picture. If there's any areas you don't want the colors to mix together, let one area dry before you put in the next area or leave a little space between them because you'll be able to cover that up later. So starting out very lightly for stage one, then you let that dry up. Stage two, going in on top, painting darker, slower, more specifically, and what you're trying to do is develop the textures. What are things made out of? Leaves, grass, dirt, rocks. You're developing the look of textures in there. The picture will take on much more of a clear, a clear look when you get to stage two. The contrast between the darks and the lights, you get separation. You're gonna get more of a three-dimensional effect. You're probably going to spend most of your time in stage two developing these textures. Stage one goes pretty fast. So do the others. But stage two, you're really developing how things look. Then you let that dry. Stage three, you're putting in the general darks, the shadows. This will create more of a three-dimensional effect in your picture. It will also solidify your design. It will give you more shapes, more large shapes in there. Every picture you do, you want to have small, medium, and large shapes. Quite often in stage two, it starts to break up quite a bit into smaller shapes. With stage three, you'll be able to pull things back together, create more solidity in your overall design with your shadows. Then you let that dry up. Then stage four, you're going in there and you're enhancing the darks. You're painting smaller, darker, getting your edges in there, painting in quite often line work, the most specific deeper darks in the picture. This will give the picture a more finished look. So as you look into this, you'll probably see how that has much more depth than the earlier stages because we're punching in those deep darks. So think about this in four steps in developing your picture. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some finished pictures versus some beginning pictures. So you look at something like this and you're going to go, oh yeah, that looks really nice. Where do you start? Most people when they try to start a picture they try to put in the very specific areas. That's actually the last thing you want to do. You want to start out big, loose, and broad. So instead of trying to finish off the areas in the beginning, you want to finish them at the end. And of course, that just makes sense, but most people miss that. They try to finish from the beginning. They try to get the finished look of the picture right off when they start the picture. So what I have here, are some beginning steps. So you look at this picture here, and the majority of this is in stage one. Now I have developed some of these areas a little bit further in there, putting that second layer of more specific, darker paint in there. But the majority of this is that soft, letting things run together look. Same thing here. This is all the beginning steps of the picture, blocking things out, developing those soft intermixing of areas, and then I am starting to get more specific areas 
in the rocks in here. Here, I've got the same picture from the earlier stages into the finish. So here, the majority of this is still in stage one, and you can see some, some areas in here are developed a bit further. This was done as a demonstration to show that transition from stage one into stage two, and then I jumped ahead into the later stages here just for the sake of the demonstration. Here you can see the finished picture and that whole idea of developing all this stuff down here with subsequent layers of paint, developing more specific textures, deepening the darks, getting more specific areas in there as I'm painting around um, the lighter areas to develop those darks. Another unfinished picture. You can see how I've got a lot of soft mingling here in the background. I'm developing these branches and the leaves on top of that. How I'm starting to etch out shapes as I'm cutting in with those darks, creating the more detailed look, the textures of things as I shape them with the darker colors. Here you see a beginning step with this one where I have developed stage two in some of these areas here and here, but the majority of this is in stage one as I'm putting those big, broad light colors in there. And then this is how it ends up looking with more specific areas as I'm developing those darks throughout the picture, getting it all balanced in there and finishing the whole thing off. Now this whole idea also works with single objects, like in painting a rose. You can see the pencil marks in here, where I'm putting that light layer of paint on top, a lot of water, letting it all run together, creating a soft effect. Then going in and darkening things up, developing those petals with a second layer of paint on top. And that's starting to get more shape, more sense of design, more sense of depth. Then stage three, putting in the general darks. Now those sink in and I'm getting more separation. And then stage four, putting in the final darks, etching out those petals, getting an overall balance throughout the picture between my lights, mediums, and darks. And you'll see how that works. Hopefully now, when you see some of these finished pictures, wet into wet throughout the background, a lot of soft wetness throughout here to get some of the feeling of the petals in here, then going in on top and getting more definition with the darks. Again, the same idea, starting in big, broad, loose, developing stronger colors as I go along. Painting around the lights. So remember the idea is painting from light to medium to dark to finish up with your extra darks. And you can see how these marks in here, these strong darks were put in later on at the end of the picture putting in these little details. Those are where your eyes want to go to, those areas of high contrast where the lights are next to the darks. That's the first thing your eyes see. And when people try to do a painting, copy a picture, work from photographs, work from life, that's the first thing they see. And generally the beginner, that's the first thing they want to put in their picture. When actually it's the last thing you want to put in your picture. Go from the general to the specific big to medium to small, light to medium to dark. So hopefully now, when you look into these pictures, you have a much better understanding of how they were constructed. A lot of wet into wet, etching out these shapes with the darks, that this whole area here 
I'm cutting in in the later stage with my dark background, separating a lot of these lighter marks, creating these textures throughout here with a silhouette around the leaves, the bushes, the flowers. Going in and creating softness that you don't want everything crisp. You want to balance between your soft, medium, and hard and soft edges in there. So hopefully this helps clarify this process. I'll be going into more of this later. So see you in the next video.